my name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. Today I want to share with you my five tips for connecting with luxury sales associates. Now Cassie Thorpe recently did a video like this and I had it in my plan and I thought why not add to the conversation because we all want to know what we can do differently to access particularly some of these hard to find pieces. Now some of the reasons that you might want to have better relationships with sales associates if you're just a common shopper like me you're not a huge youtuber you're not a huge luxury influencer on instagram you're just a person who likes to casually indulge in a luxury handbag or two once or twice a year or perhaps you're looking for your first purchase these relationships are pretty important in terms of being thought of um, and in my own experience I can share a few stories around how I was able to access difficult to obtain pieces because of the relationships that I had with sales associates. Obviously my caramel Chanel 19 from the 21p collection, Tyler my fabulous associate at Chanel honestly put up with me contacting him multiple times over the couple of weeks that I was waiting for this piece to come in store um, and he was quite happy about that he, he you know we talked about it and I said oh I'm sorry for bothering you and he said absolutely not we didn't know if it was coming the fact that you had seen it in socials and you were able to say you wanted this piece, I was able to find it for you and he was able to secure it. So through that relationship, I was able to get that bag. My pochette Matisse, which obviously I didn't keep, but I bought into the hype of that piece. My sales associate at Louis Vuitton was amazing when I said, I think I want that bag. I think I'm, yep, I'm really interested. Can you look into it for me? She said it would be about three weeks. There were waiting lists everywhere. At the time, people were not getting that bag. I was a nobody. I mean, yeah, I'd bought a few pieces from Louis Vuitton, but I was in no way a VIP. But because of our relationship and rapport, she considered me for pieces that came into the store. And within two weeks, she gave me a call to advise me that a Pochette Matisse had come in. A shout out to Bessie. You might be watching this, girly. Um, she's no longer um, with Fendi, but she scoured the world for this bag. Um, and it was shortly after I'd purchased my sequined um, carry bag and I am super super appreciative of that this color you just cannot describe this color um, and all of these purchases were made possible because of great relationships great trust and um, mutual trust between each other so the first thing I want to do is just talk about some of the mechanics of actually creating a relationship with a sales associate. I used to be intimidated walking into luxury boutiques and I'm sure most of us at the beginning of our journey not really sure what to expect. Turn up to a boutique, there's a man on the door with a suit, um, you can't open the door, you're not sure if you should push the door open or you should just stand there and wait for them to open the door and then that kind of sets you in a bit of a tears, you go into the boutique are you allowed to touch things? Are you not allowed to touch things? Some things are behind glass. Some things are on shelves at the back of the boutique. Other things are sitting right there. Can you pick them up and touch them? You don't know. Um, sometimes sales associates will come up to you immediately or be assigned to you. Um, absolutely, when you enter a Louis Vuitton store, there's a concierge and you're assigned somebody and you don't usually get to go inside until there is a sales associate ready to help you. So you could be walking around waiting for somebody to help you, like a typical store, but they're all busy with other customers or they haven't been assigned to you, so they're all hanging back because you could be already connected with a sales associate. So that was certainly my first experience and... Um, what I learned was uh, to make eye contact with somebody and then walk toward them and say, hi, my name's Dale and I'm here to have a look at blah, blah, blah. Not literally blah, 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 but to be quite assertive in creating that relationship. And every time you do that, you make it clear that you're there to look at things 
or maybe buy things, but that you're not just floating around casually, you know, checking things out. I mentioned it just now and I mentioned it in another video, but when you first talk to a sales associate, if they say, hi, can I help you today? Introduce yourself right there and then. Hi, my name's Dale. Then you invite them to share their name. Now, when you do that, you have a connection. You only have to say that person's name once and you remember it. And the same for you. It's really awkward when you're half an hour, three quarters of an hour into a conversation and you want to go away and think about what you've looked at and you say, I'm sorry, what was your name again? You've been talking to each other for that long, like that, you know, it's that's super awkward. So introduce yourself at the very beginning. Then if you do want some time to consider your purchase or you haven't found what you're looking for that day, you can say, for example, um, Thanks for your time today, Sarah. I really appreciate it. I really need to think about whether or not this is the right choice for me. Do you have any contact details that I can take so I can touch base with you when I come into the city again and potentially I can take another look at this item or I can talk to you about what I'm thinking as a result of having had this look? Now, that is a really natural way that you can exchange contact details and usually what I like to do is if they don't have a card um, most will have a card and they'll write their name on it I'll just ask for their number I'll pop it in my phone and I ring them so that they have my number in their phone and then when I leave this door I just send a little text and say again thanks so much for your time today I will be in touch around with regard to this particular item in the future Right, the second tip that I have for you, be super transparent about what you're there for. So another story, when I went shopping with my daughter-in-law, Jade, she really wanted to have a look in person at Louis Vuitton bags. She'd seen a lot online, but she hadn't really seen any in person. So she wasn't really confident around buying blind online. We were together in the city. I said, let's go and take a look. And I hadn't contacted my SA to say that we were coming in because I wanted her to create her own experience. So we lined up on the door. We were allocated a sales associate. And I said that we were looking at a couple of bags. The Alma BB would be one of them. Um, we had no intention of buying that day. We were looking for a first purchase. So the Alma BB, the Crissette, um, any other camera or sh uh, crossbody bag styles in canvas we'd be really interested in having a look at. On that basis we were allocated two trainee sales associates which was fantastic because they got to run around and grab all of the bags which they had heaps in stock. They were also learning about the bags at the same time which was fantastic and there was no pressure to buy. We went away had lunch decided that she was going to purchase the bag, went back, purchased the bag, and it was a great experience for her and the sales associates. So my advice is be super transparent. If you are wanting to look at, if you say, listen, I'm looking for a key holder today. I'm looking for a way to store my keys. I'm open to all options. That's one thing. Or if you say, I really want to have a look at a six ring key holder in canvas or epi leather. Do you, can you help me? that's being really specific. If you say, I'm celebrating a special occasion and I'm considering purchasing a handbag to mark this milestone, I'd like to just have a look at what's new. Uh, if somebody could show me around, that would be great. All of those things are really transparent ways to say what you're doing there, what you're open to, so that you don't get that pushiness and you don't get that resentment from a sales associate because you've said that you're going to do one thing and then you don't follow through. My third tip is the sales associate knows more about what's hidden in those drawers and cupboards than you ever will. When I purchased this bag, I didn't know this bag even existed. I had ordered in another bag in this kind of color with a top handle um, and I cannot remember what it was. Anyway, they were able to get it in black not in the color that I wanted the style just didn't work for me and I said what else do you have like I'm after something that's a bit different and that color was really um, 
calling me because I don't like the beige so much. And my sales associate went out the back and found one of these in a teal and she said, what do you think of this? I would never have considered that bag. And I said, look, I really love it. I just don't know if the color is something that I would get a lot of use out of. And she said, hold on a second. And then she bought it out in this color. And I was sold. A bag that I was not even interested in, nor did I know it existed. So my third tip is make sure that you ask what else do you have? Because you'll never know what you're missing out on. My fourth tip, ask for the price. Don't stand back in terms of guessing what you think the price might be. Ask, what is the price for this piece? It's not a shameful thing to do. You cannot be expected to know what the price is on these bags unless it's advertised online and even if it is you can't it's not your job to remember all of the prices in your head when you go shopping um so your essay will really appreciate if they bring out a bag you say um can i you know what's the price on this item and if they say listen um I think they don't normally know off the top of their head either. And if they come out with something like, this piece is $7,500, you can say, look, that's really a bit more than I was expecting to pay today. What styles do you have that might sit underneath the $6,000 mark? Being in denial about the price means that, A, you will feel... Some people feel like they have to go ahead with the sale because they've taken up so much of their sales associate's time. And then to return it later, not not a good option. Better to ask for the price and say, look, that's a little bit out of my expectation for today. Or, okay, um, I'm going to need to leave that item. What else can you show me that fits in a certain price bracket? Um, do that rather than buy it regret it and take it back because you're guilty or you didn't have the money which leads nicely into my fifth tip always consider your purchase i mentioned this in another video recently but if you are really interested in a bag you will often get those lines this is the only one we have left we only got one into the store there were only four provided to your country those sorts of things really force you into purchasing without thinking. Now, it is not too much for you to ask your sales associate for a half hour or an hour to go and have a coffee and consider this purchase. This works out better for both of you. You are making a considered purchase. You can do some research online. You can call a friend. You can literally write a pros and cons list, whatever you do to make these sorts of decisions. Obviously, check your bank balance. That's a good tip. Your sales associate is confident that when you come back, if you are making the purchase, it's an informed purchase. You're not going to be returning this item unless it's faulty, which let's hope it's not. If you just come back and decide, look, it's not for me to make this purchase, that's not a bad thing. A lot of associates now are not even paid on commission. So the challenge, the assumptions that we make around what motivates people to sell to us can really get us into a bit of a bind. Much better to be open and transparent. All the best relationships are built on honesty and authenticity. And it's the same with your sales associate. So I'm going to link Cassie's video down below because I think she did a great job. I think Cassie, you know, she did have tens of thousands of dollars of Dior products delivered to her house to do a home shopping vlog. She has a different relationship with her sales associate than I do, that's for sure. But I hope that from this video, you've heard a couple of stories that kind of demonstrate how you build those relationships. If you have any additional tips to share, please do so in the comments below. I think this forum is really important for people, particularly off the back of some of the challenges associated in getting hard to find pieces and resellers buying up market share um, of those pieces. Having a sales associate is more important than it probably ever has been before, particularly if you're after a popular or hard to find piece. So I put out videos on Wednesdays and Sundays. I'll see you next time. Bye.